beautiful, pretty rocks that are like glittering in the flames of the candle? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jen from Valley Buzzsaw. In today's video, we're gonna get playing with some concrete. If you guys have been around here for a while, then you probably remember my concrete and plaster project series that I started, I don't know, three or four months back. If you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, I'll link to them all down in the description so you can check them out. But for today's video, I just kind of want to jump right in because this is one that I've been wanting to do for a while. We need something out on our patio. I really, really wanted a cute little fire pit and so that's what we're gonna try to do today. If you like videos like this, don't forget to let us know by giving us a thumbs up. You can find that down below. Right next to that down below is also that big old red subscribe button please click that. We would love to have you join us over here. And when the bell shows up, after you've hit subscribe, just choose all, and then that way you'll be notified every time we put new videos out, which happens every Friday morning at 6 a.m. local Arizona time. So without any more blabbering from me, let's build a really cute patio fire pit. In addition to the concrete, I will list all of the other materials for this job that you're gonna need right here. Oh yeah, that's a good one, you need that. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. I will also link to all of those materials down in the description box below. Because of the nature of the fire pit that I'm making, I wanted to do this as a two bucket situation and you guys will see that in just a second how I'm gonna do that with the pour. But because of the way that I'm doing this, because this center bowl is gonna be weighted down into the bottom bowl, which will be filled with concrete, I needed to know exactly where to put it to be centered, as well as keep it from falling into the bowl underneath. So I used these takeout chopsticks and taped them down. I wasn't able to completely measure exactly, but I feel like I got it as centered as possible for this particular application. It doesn't have to be perfect. And once I pour and weight this down with my rocks and then stick this inside this bowl to cause the concrete to rise, I want to make sure that this thing stays stable and steady. But I at least wanted to give a little bit of an explanation of how I'm doing this because chopsticks were obviously not in my materials list. Full disclosure, I have never done anything like this before with concrete for a pour. Most of the time that I've ever used concrete, I've been troweling it out and it's been like, to level out things or to do a top coat on something. I've never done, you know, this fast set stuff to make anything like this. So I'm kind of learning on the fly and I'm kind of taking you along with me for the ride. So buckle up baby, cause here we go. five minutes it's going to start setting up.
break in here and let you guys know that concrete while it's curing is going to put off an exothermic reaction. Anything that sets up when it's curing is basically going to do that. Think like resin, soap, concrete, stuff like that. It means that this container is really hot. It puts out heat. I'm not going to pretend to be a scientist or that I have all of the answers of how that actually works. So if you want to read more on exothermic reactions, I will put a link down in the description below. So if you've been here before for any of my DIY plaster and concrete projects in this series, then you already know why I have a bag in a five gallon bucket guys go check out the other video in this series to get the full impact of what this is about and why I do it like this. Click on that down in the description or up in the cards. And now the reveal. Okay. Look at that. It's almost completely centered. I really thought I did worse than that, but that's not bad at all. This side's a little thicker than this side, but you almost can't tell. The one thing that I do love here, I will zoom in real quick, I don't know if you can see that in the bottom, but that is the brand of the bowl that I used <laughs> to use as a mold, as well as the recycling. Now, let's talk about a few things here. Bubbles, lots of them. I shook it out and I tried to be unlumpy, but apparently I didn't do the greatest job on that. You can see like this is a pretty decent divot here and I'm not sure what that is. It almost looks like maybe too much petroleum jelly. Also there's a huge divot on the side here. It's pretty smooth and flat on the top and everything on the inside that's a little janky is going to get sanded out. So let's get going with the sanding and get this thing ready for the final finishing touches, but I'm pretty pleased. Just as a side note, safety first. So to finish this thing off, I ran out to a couple of different places to pick up some supplies. I also have these pair of goggles. Sorry, my camera is a little jumpy here. I'm using the phone today. I have these goggles. I'm going to need those because I grabbed these Fiskars snips. They're like, I'll just show you the packaging here. They are a heavy duty utility snip, sometimes called a tin snip. They should go through metal with absolutely no problem. I haven't tested them yet, but I'm gonna use them on this Ashland chicken wire. This is gonna be what I use on the top of the fire pit in order to contain the beads. Now, one thing I'm gonna say about these beads, they fit through the holes. They are too small and they fit through the holes. So I have a little idea of how I'm gonna hack that so that I can make those glass beads kind of stick around. But I'm gonna get started uh, measuring out the fire pit top so that I can know exactly how much of this I need to cut in a circle and where the center circle needs to be.
to use the shop vac. Lots of metal shards like all over the place from clipping of this thing. So I didn't exactly intend on doing an unboxing in this video, but I am about to open up for the first time our Bauer six gallon wet dry shop vac. I'm super excited to give this thing a go. And if you haven't seen our garage cleaning out, getting things set and ready video, I will link to that down in the description as well, because I go into some detail there of why we're getting rid of the old shop vac and replacing it with this new one. So if you guys do want to see any unboxings ever in the future, tools, materials, supplies, anything like that, just leave me a comment down below and let me know that those are videos that you like to see because I'd be more than happy to do it if it's something that you guys are into. But for today, I'm just going to get to it and finish this everything. Everybody, I've got these rocks here and I've had them for a very long time. I picked these up at a few of my favorite beaches back on the East Coast in the Northeast. I wish you could truly see the color differences here. We've got cream, we've got purple, there's brown in here, we've got some pink, there's a gorgeous pink one down the bottom. Pink here. And um, there's some really cool ones, like bigger rocks like this that are multi-layered, it looks like. I love them, and I think that's what I'm gonna end up using for the majority of like the filler in the bigger part of the lower part of the fire pit. So now that we've got the candle in there and we've got the rocks in there as our little filler pieces, it's time to get our glass beads added. Got some really cool looks to them too. As you can see, it's like almost like a marble where it's got some glass on the inside, different color tones. Everybody, I want to give the update final thoughts on all things fire pit. Would I do this project again? Oh, that's a hell yes. In fact, I already have plans to make the second one so that we can put it on our second table out on the patio. So we've got like a nice little matchy matchy thing going on out there. I already checked to make sure that the glass beads are still available and I have tons of that rock. So that's not going to be a problem to do some kind of filler. Also, I have a second one of these citronella candles and we get a healthy number of mosquitoes out there. So this thing is just going to be invaluable when we're just kind of hanging out out on the patio, trying not to get eaten alive. How do I feel about this as far as five minute crafts goes? Well, let me tell you, this is the first one I've made that I feel like truly exactly as it was depicted in their video is pretty much exactly what you're gonna get. Yeah, I'm giving like a humongous thumbs up to five minute crafts on this one because it's kind of cool. Obviously, I don't necessarily think they were the first people to ever come up with this concept as far as like bowl in bowl and you know, concrete um, to make a bowl. 
but I do like that they showed it as a fire pit because it just gave me so much inspiration for my own patio and anything that gives inspiration as far as I'm concerned is pretty freaking sweet. I actually feel like this particular fire pit is even sturdier than any of the things that I made out of plaster. And I mean, it is because plaster is a much um, less dense material than a concrete like this. So this is going to be a lot stronger overall. In the future, if I, when I do the second one, I may experiment a little bit about putting in some rebar because this is pretty close to an inch thick and that just kind of nerves me a little bit that this thing could crack. It didn't crack yet, but you know, you just never know with stone. <laughs> Anything can happen in the future, so am I putting this out on my patio? Yes. Am I super excited about sitting out on the patio at night and enjoying some mosquito-free air and beautiful pretty rocks that are like glittering in the flames of the candle? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw in this video, you can let us know by giving us a thumbs up. You can find that down below. Also next to that down below is that big old red subscribe button. You want to click that. If you haven't already, join us over here. We have kind of a good time over in these parts and we'd love to have you over here with us. Also, if you would like to be notified about all of the videos that we put out, you can click on the bell when it shows up after you hit subscribe and choose all from that menu for the bell. That way you will be notified, hopefully, every single time we do go up with a new video. We like to put out new videos every Friday morning at 6 a.m. so that we can be a good part of your weekend. And we hope you guys get out there and tackle some kind of a DIY project of your own this weekend. Be a DIY warrior, find some inspiration, and just go for it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you in the next one. Why can't I just say words today? How is this my theme? I'm just gonna need to make a compilation video of myself of like every time that I try to say words and then the words just don't happen and then I complain to myself about trying to say words. How does he even wear these? They're so tiny. They're too small for my tiny head and that's saying something because I got a tiny head. Ooh. Okay, bending over. Oh, shake it off. Ooh, I just looked in that light, man. I am blind again. Blinding by the light. Don't sing. Stop singing. Really, really, I just say really way too much.